Hi guys, welcome to our next video. And this is our second video in our triggers and Salesforce sessions. So in the last session, we left off at looking after context variables like trigger.new, trigger.old, stuff like that. So today we are continuing from that session and we're gonna continue to the next step in our triggers and that is the concept of building logicless triggers so basically logicless triggers or triggers using helper classes what that practice says is that your apex trigger should not actually contain the logic that you want to run all the logic that is supposed to be run on your trigger should be housed in a separate apex class and then you should just call that separate apex class from your apex trigger so for example, as you can go on our website and see this concept in action is there is this trigger here on the opportunity which is supposed to be run after the insert event. So you see there is only a single line inside of this trigger which is calling another apex class. And then we have this second apex class which houses all the logic inside of it. So and then below that we have an example here right and this example is going to demonstrate how do we actually implement logicless triggers and this will also demonstrate a complete example of an apex trigger from the use case so the example is that we are going to define a custom object called merchandise in our org which is already set up in my org right here it's called merchandise it has just a type field which is text right so the requirement of our trigger is that if a user deletes this merchandise objects any record then that deleted record should be saved in another object which is called your merchandise archive right here so if you delete a merchandise record you should see the record in the merchandise archives record section so it kind of behaves like a temporary recycle bin for you that any merchandise that you delete is archived and saved in the merchandise archive record or object right so now the first thing to design triggers is that you need to figure out what is the entry point of your trigger so in this case the scenario or the problem says that we want to run the trigger when we delete a merchandise record right so that means that we need to define a trigger on the merchandise object and then our trigger is going to run logic on the deletion of a merchandise record so we'll be writing the trigger on the merchandise and we'll be handling the after delete event on the trigger so here is our merchandise object right so all i have to do is go to the apex triggers section right here like this now I'm going to say, let's name this trigger as archive trigger. Then since I want to run my event delete, so I'm going to run this on the after delete. I'm not going to put any logic inside of it yet because what I want to do is I want to design a helper class which is going to have all the logic inside of it. Then we are just going to call that helper class from this trigger. So let me open my Apex classes, create a new Apex class, and let's call this class Archive Helper like this, and just click Save it. Now I'm going to create one static method inside of this class, like just name it. What do you say archive and this will receive a list of my merchandise records and these will be all the records that have been deleted so I'm gonna receive list of merchandise record and I'm gonna call it deleted records like this Now, 
I'm going to create one more object here. And then basically I want to define another list inside of this matter for the archive records that I'm going to be creating. So like this. And the rest of the logic is going to be really straightforward. And we have this whole example on a website so you can use it like that. So the rest of the example is that you're just gonna run a for loop on the deleted records that we just received of the merchandise object. Like this, you're gonna iterate the deleted records. And then for each of these deleted records, we're gonna create an archive record. So like this, pull to new merchandise archive. Then I'm just gonna map out whatever mapping we have, the name and the type. And then, Will to m dot type like this, and then the rch dot add here, and then the last we're just gonna insert the archive records like this. Once I do this, our helper class is ready. Now we just need to call this helper class from our trigger. So. I'm going to copy the name of this, go to my trigger and call this method here and we're going to pass trigger dot new in this, like this. So basically the same way we did here, oh, so instead of passing trigger dot new, we actually need to pass trigger dot hold because the trigger dot new is not available in the after delete event because after the record has been deleted there is no trigger dot new it is only before it was deleted that it was visited in the database so but long story short we have this trigger now set up on the merchandise then we have this helper class which is being called from our trigger we're gonna save both of these out and then now we have our automation in place so now if I go back to any of my merchandise records, create a new one, and we're gonna type it as FTC. So I'm just gonna open the archives as well on this side. So right now we only have a single archive of the name sales source, but if I delete this, so this got deleted, but if I refresh the archives here, so you see that the deleted test demo merchandise now shows up in the merchandise archive list. And we have created this record via our Apex trigger. So this is how we go get over the concept of helper classes and logicless triggers in Salesforce, where you basically want to put all your logic in your helper classes instead of it directly being there in your trigger. Also, apart from this, if you guys notice, we have to go over a really important concept in Apex triggers, which is called the bulkification of triggers. What is the bulkification of triggers? So, what happens is if I go back to the Apex trigger, this right here so this should work for any number of records that are deleted I mean if you talk about the user interface you can only delete one single record at a time but you can use data loader or other code to delete multiple records together so in that case your trigger dot old it being a list will contain multiple records together so Bulkification of a trigger means that when, when you receive those records here in this method, you should handle all of those records combined in a way that you do not mess around with any of the Salesforce limitations like doing 
query inside a for loop or doing DML inside a for loop, even though you gave multiple records here, you still handle these with a bulkified approach. So in this particular example, we are creating a list of archives, then we are only doing a single insertion of those archives with this list. We could have also inserted the archives here, like after defining it here, but this would have done this DML inside of this for loop, which is not, not a best practice. This is what is referred to as bulkification of your apex triggers. And lastly, the another important point about it, it is that it is another best practice to only have a single apex trigger on each object. So if I have defined this archive trigger on the merchandise, if I want to add functionality later in the form of a trigger to the merchandise object, I should not create a new second trigger, but I should add functionality in here in this trigger. Maybe in the future, I want to have this trigger also run on the after insert, right? And then inside of this, actual class, what we will do is we'll check with the context variable of the is insert, like trigger dot if we are running this in the deletion, we call this method. And then else we'll be calling the second method in the case of the insert, right? So again, a best practice to only have a single apex trigger on each object. So this being a really simple example, it would really help you guys out if you make this example in your org yourself. And then you can move on to future examples of more complexity. So, all right guys, this was it for the simple triggers and Salesforce session, where we showed you guys how to bulkify the triggers how to have your triggers in a logicless form and also how you only should have a single trigger per S object. So, I hope you guys understood this and we'll see you guys in the next session.